Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're back in War Thunder and today we're going to be talking about the importance of AI in the game. Now I'm going to discuss this looking at an arcade battle and a realistic. So we're going to start off with the arcade battle as we can see and basically what we have to look out for. AI is a massive part of War Thunder. I would say it encompasses about half of the game when it comes to tactics, when it comes to positioning and everything like that. When we look in Arcade, we are not so much looking at um, fighters which are AI or bombers, we are looking at zones, we are looking at tanks and such like that. I am talking about air combat here, ground combat I may cover in another video. Basically when we look at AI in Arcade, we are looking first of all at the bases, and then we are looking at the columns of tanks, and then after that we are looking at pillboxes and AA around the map. Now when we look at stuff like tanks and such like that, they are usually in columns, and because they are quite a nice juicy target for dive bombers, medium bombers and heavy bombers, most of the action are is going to uh, basically happen around them. Usually the AI will converge into the center of the map, and therefore that is usually where the swarm is of fighters and bombers. Now for me personally, if I'm flying a bomber, I usually go for the bases first just to get them out of the way. It is free basic points and hitting them is very much easier than hitting tanks, especially with the splash radius of the bombs right now. But in arcade, if you are playing as a fighter and you are looking to dogfight, you do definitely have to learn the maps and learn where the AI is, because if you know where your ally AI are, you know where their bombers are going, where their fighters are probably going, and also where their attackers are going, because at the end of the day, in arcade, if you take out um, ground if you take out ground targets such as tanks, armored cars, bases and everything like that, you will win the battle. That is basically how it works. It works on a point system and you have a ticket and if you take out stuff as it goes, that's how it works. Now, first of all, when it comes to hitting AI and stuff like that, we have to look at bomb loads. If you're in a bomber, as you can see here, I'm in the IL-4, Depending on what you want to hit, bomb loads are a massive thing. When we look at something like a Wellington, you can either get a bomb load which is very much a ton of bombs which are decently sized, or one bomb which is huge. I'm talking about the thousand pound barrel here. And the thing is, that's kind of the same with the IL-4, and in a smaller respect. With this, you can either take uh, like something like um, 10 100s and a few 250s or you can take something like this where it's two 500s and a thousand and because I have less bombs that means I'm focusing on the bases if I want to carpet bomb obviously more bombs are better but when it comes to stuff like 50 kilogram bombs to take out AA tanks I would definitely say that's a bad idea but anything up from that is a great idea and obviously with carpet bombing you're going to be hitting more stuff and more AI. But with the smaller amount of bombs we're looking at bases. Something you do have to remember about bases, they usually have about three anti-air guns around them. Now if you're as high as I am, they're going to really struggle to hit you. But if you are diving into a base, that is something you have to look out for. But this all goes back to what I was saying before where you have to learn the maps. Each map is different, even at this height where you are basically in space, where it may all look the same. You have to learn where the bases are on each map, you have to learn the pattern of where the tanks are going to go, so you can basically try and bomb ahead of them if you're at this height. You also must know where the AA are. Now on this map, there are some AA around the airfield and the bases, that is what you have to worry about. But overall, uh, when we look at the columns of the tanks, there are some armoured cars, and I'm not sure if there are AA or not, but I believe there are some. So that is what we have to look out for when we're attacking things. Obviously, while we're thinking about all of this stuff, we also have to think about the enemy team and where they are. And that can be an issue overall. But when it comes to learning maps and learning what to do, it gets to a point where that is put into your subconscious and you don't have to think about it anymore. 
this is what I found definitely more in realistic, where you basically, if you see somebody take out a target and you look on the map and you see, oh, that there should be a dot there, but it isn't there anymore, then you can plan your attacks accordingly. Because in your mind, you know that that should have been there, but because it's been destroyed, it's not there. Kind of as simple as that. But when it comes to targeting of AI, uh, AI on you I mean, it can be very much RNG, it seems like it anyway, it seems like there's some calculation done where the closer you are to them, uh, the more chance they have of hitting you, but sometimes you can get sniped from 4 or 5k uh, when it comes to these AA guns, even armoured cars, and the thing is, what can I say, sometimes that happens, you just have to shrug it off, I'm sure it happened in World War 2, why, why not make it happen in this game. Also, you have to understand that armoured cars, light tanks, medium tanks, they will try and dodge your bombs. They will try and move around, increase, decrease their speed, stop to try and avoid you hitting them. Now, as you can see, as I'm coming up to these tanks here, they start darting around. They start going left or right. Now, if this is here, historical or not, well, it's in the game. It's arcade mode, but they also do it in realistic. And because of that, I miss my bombs. The splash radius should have hit them if this was real life, but this isn't real life, this is War Thunder, something we have to remember. But just take that in mind, the AI is smart enough to basically try and dodge you. They try and dodge your bombs, which is something which is very nice, and it means that as a human player you have to react to it. And as you can see, because I've gone low here, the AA has started hitting me, but also I've attracted players' attentions. And, well, he came off a bit worse for wear. But because I'm lower, it means I am more accurate at taking out tanks. But it also means that the tanks may see me coming. I know this sounds really odd, but I believe through experience and through gameplay, if I'm in a bomber and if I'm going after tanks low, they seem to dodge more than if you drop bombs from 4 or 5k. Now, this could just be me making stuff up, but that's how it seems to be. If you drop bombs and follow them down with the U key, uh, which is a default so you may have it changed, it seems like they don't really dodge um, as effectively when you're dropping them from a higher height. They seem to go in a straight line. Maybe because they don't see the bombs coming, but they see the bomber. Maybe that's how it works. But as you can see on this map, as most of the time, the tanks are running into each other. Now, there is something to take into account here. If you, let's say, just take out one tank and the enemy doesn't take out any, your allied tanks will eventually meet the enemy tanks in the center of the map, in a predetermined spot. And it seems like there is a bit of RNG involved, but overall, if you have more tanks, those tanks will win against the enemy tanks. You see this a lot in Realistic, where, let's say it's howitzers versus tanks, howitzers have a larger... Uh, they seem to have a larger chance of killing a tank than a tank, the pillbox or the howitzer. But the thing is, when it comes to arcade, it seems to be a fair battle. Each side starts off with the same amount of things, usually tanks, or sometimes artillery, but not really. And the thing is, if they meet in the middle, eventually, if your ticket counter is slightly less than your opponent, you will win. So that is something to take into account. But looking at bases and everything like that, and... Oh. I'm sorry you had to see that. That was horrible from me. Um, I should have definitely done better <laughs> when it comes to looking out for mountains and stuff like that. But overall, if you have more of a ticket counter than your enemy when the tanks meet, then you should win as long as nobody... Uh, basically attacks the tanks at that time. Now there are certain ways you can take out AI ground vehicles. You obviously have rockets, you have bombs, even cannons can penetrate them. The 20mm Shivak with ground target belts is wonderful at taking out anything up to medium tanks, but you do, with a medium tank, it is very odd. When you attack it, you have to attack it from above and hit the engine compartments. With light tanks, it's the same deal, but it'll take a few less shots to kill. And with rockets, well, uh, maybe you should go to a different guide, because as you can see, even though I get very, very close, I don't actually hit a tank with this volley. I feel like with rockets, um, 
they don't fly straight. They obviously dip a bit, but sometimes when they are fired, they don't fire where they should, if that makes sense. Like, as you can see with those rockets, I aimed them... Uh, I aimed them forward, but they went down a little bit at the start instead of going straight. And that's not to do with the fact that these uh, rockets uh, do that normally. They just don't. They don't do that. They usually go straight and then they dip a bit when it comes to a certain distance. So when it comes to rockets, once again, a random number generator is probably involved in somewhere. But before we can die, we can take out another aircraft. The thing is, at the end of the day, when it comes to AI and stuff like that, bombers and attackers are going to take them out. So if you can kill bombers and attackers, you're going to be doing pretty well, especially in arcade. Uh, the bombers win you matches. It's been said many times. It's been said over and over again. But it is one of those points that I cannot stress enough. Bombers really do when you match it, especially when you get to the higher tiers, it's something that's kind of put me off tier 4 arcade, because, well, you have stuff like B-17s, you have the years, you have the starts of the G5 and the G8N1, and they just start ripping people apart, and they also hit all their targets and can climb to space. But when it comes to taking out AI, sometimes you will be unlucky, sometimes you would think that a bomb landing next to a tank should kill it, but it doesn't. It doesn't even stop, it just keeps going. Another thing I would definitely say when it comes to ground attack in arcade uh, with regards to AI is prioritize the tanks because they cost tickets. As you can see in the bottom left of this screen, they are the things that count. They are the things that cause you to lose. If you take out more uh, tanks than the enemy, then you win. Another thing to look for is obviously the zones are not included in that, but they give you a certain amount of tickets, and destroying the airfield basically wins you the game because the ticket counter will uh, slowly go down. But you do have to prioritize main targets. In a fighter, if I'm in a fighter like this, I will prioritize armored cars and AA because I do not have the bombs or rockets to take out the medium and light tanks. I may be able to do it with the 20mm, but it would be a waste of time. I could probably take out one tank to five or six AAs or armored cars. And the thing is, if I take them out, that means that they cannot shoot my bombers and my attackers. It means that they are out of the fight. They are dead. And also, as a fighter, you do have to kind of protect your bombers. And if that means taking out other fighters, that should be your job. Sometimes it can feel very tasty to go after human players, but sometimes it is the wrong thing to do. Most of the time it is actually better to go after the AI on a map instead of going after human fighters, because as you can see at this point, there is a ton of fighters on the enemy team around me, but what are they doing to contribute to the battle? Absolutely nothing. I'm in basically part of the swarm. I am sat in the middle of the bees nest and it they are not contributing they are not killing ground targets they are not doing anything so when it comes to actually winning yes we have to put in the fun factor and everything like that but when it actually comes to winning a game they are not contributing anything for their team so you should prioritize them the least if they are in that furball and they are not really uh, near anything such as tanks or uh, AA or armored cars, you shouldn't really prioritize them except if you want to try and kill them with a bang and just have some fun. And obviously this is a game. We are looking for fun, but sometimes you actually have to play properly and play, play tactically, and that's kind of what I'm here to explain. So after that arcade battle, we saw that we successfully took out a decent chunk of the AI and also how to deal with fighters who are in that furball around the AI. So we'll get on to the realistic battle. So here we are in the realistic battle portion where AI definitely plays a much more pivotal role in realistic. When we look at AI, we have to also remember that sometimes on your team you have AI players. Now this can be people like Shinya, 
or stuff like that. Interesting little pilots in themselves. They have weird tracking and this only really comes from experience. When watching them, sometimes from the start of a battle, they will just tag onto someone and they will go after them all day. Sometimes they can swing a battle. On Hokkaido, there is sometimes a TBF or a B-25 which actually hits a ground target which can swing the battle in your favor, basically meaning that if you leave him to do that at the start of the battle, which is very hard to stop him, to be quite honest, because it happens in the first five minutes or so, he can basically swing the game, because let's say you don't have any ground attackers or cannot get any bombs or rockets, then you will lose because you are basically a tank down and therefore if nobody does anything on Hokkaido the Americans win automatically because of that and even without him they still win it's a very odd showing but anyway in realistic learning the maps is a massive thing because obviously in realistic the maps are much larger than they are in arcade which means that the battles are usually more uh, spread out it doesn't just happen in a furball in the center. That means that tracking targets is a big thing, that also means tracking what is killed is a big thing. Now if you have AI planes, they will usually go to a certain area of the map, usually central or central left or central right at a certain altitude. And the thing is, sometimes it is worth watching them because players will go after them. They will try their darndest to kill the AI to get a few research points and a few monies before they have to go back to base. Or maybe they're not confident in taking on real players, so they have to go after AI. That is fine. You know, if they want to do that, they do that. It gives away their position, as long as you know and track where your AI is. But as I said before, sometimes at the start of a battle, one of your AI may go a bit crazy, or one of the enemy AI may go a bit crazy, and they will just lock onto somebody from the start, and they will go after them. That means making sure you know where your AI is is much is a much bigger deal because they will literally track human players for you and also it's just nice to have a companion on your side if you are trying to take somebody else now just like arcade there are usually columns of tanks in realistic or columns of something sometimes there are areas which have howitzers and pillboxes and the like so that is something we have to watch out for usually it's tanks versus pillboxes, or vice versa, or sometimes tanks versus tanks, or sometimes there's a mixture of uh, some of them. And once again, you will learn through experience on each map where these are. It is pretty obvious, usually it's around a central location, but sometimes it's around uh, lines, like you have on the left side a column of tanks, on the right side you'll have some pillboxes. Sometimes there's a river in the way. But something you have to track and this is massively important, is the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Basically the kill, uh, the kill stream, what is being killed. This is not just for aircraft, this is also for stuff like vehicles and things like that. So in this map you will see that some JU-87s are taking out some ground targets. So I start going over there because I look on my map and I go right, these are the ground targets which are being taken out because I can see the little dots on my map, therefore I can single out which ones have been taken out. So now an easy trick to do this is usually tank columns will have the same number of tanks in each column, so if you see one which is slightly lower than the other ones, then you know that they're there. Also, another thing is you can do by timing. Usually a lot of these bombers start with air spawns, so they're going to get two targets before you, but Let's say uh, you're on Hokkaido or you're on this map. It will take the enemy longer to get to the other side of the map, to the other tank columns. And a lot of players will go after the ones closest to them because they want to guarantee kills because they are unsure if they're going to get shot down or not. Just like this Spaviero did. He went for the base which was closest to him, the one which he felt was the most secure. So what do we do? We go, after, we go after that base first. He's thinking that we, as a team, are going to go to the center of the map or to the left of the map to climb away from the enemy to get some height, but instead we can cut him off, which is exactly what I did here, which means that I can get the kill. But while this is all going on, the JU-87s are still hammering. 
but because I have my map knowledge and I know where my AI are on my side, I know where they are in the map. I can also tell by where my uh, human players are or my allies because they will be congregating around the enemy. But also if I had AI planes, they would be after them uh, very fast. Another thing to take into account, especially in realistic, is that a lot of things are more deadly. Obviously you have proper flight models, or supposedly proper flight models, and the same with damage models. So one strike from an AA gun can kill you, where in arcade it's a bit more forgiving. It seems like right now at least your cooling system on your plane really suffers when getting hit by AA. And because these maps, they sometimes have AA dotted around the center, not just on the airfields and stuff, that is something you have to watch out for. And it took me a ton of bullets to take out that Spaviero, but he's finally going down. I took out all of his gunners, I took out two engines, I set him on fire, and finally, the Italian Stallion is in the ground. But the thing is, um, because I know the positioning of the AI, because I know where my zones are, I know what has been killed, and I know where to go. Also, with my allies calling out where the enemies are, I can go and help them, but because I put so many shots into the uh, Spaviero, I have to go and land. But that does not mean I turn my brain off. That basically means I look at the map and I assess the situation. This is something I cannot stress enough. When you are out of combat, when you are in that mode where you're like, should I go back to base or should I go and help my allies or do I have enough ammo and everything like that, you have to think. You cannot just switch off. Sometimes I listen to music while doing this and I get a bit carried away and therefore when we get to that point, when we get to this point here, I switch off and I see that enemies are around me but I don't really care, I don't look for them. But when you're in this mode you are the most vulnerable so you have to make sure that you are in a position to defend yourself, to gun your engines, to get back up in the air as soon as possible. You also have to look at the map and think, right, I need to see where I am needed when I set off again, basically. And right now, we know that there are guys attacking the ground targets. We have two JU-87s confirmed because they have two different names and they're attacking ground targets. We can also check on the team uh, sheets, basically, by pressing tab, and we can see that two aircraft have a lot of ground kills and a few assists, which basically means there is going to be a fighter near them or something of that nature, and they are going to survive. That is basically how we're doing this. This is how we're working right now. So when it comes to attacking them, we have to be wary there's going to be at least one fighter near them, and also that they are taking out ground targets at an accelerated rate. And because this is a larger map than it is in arcade, it is going to take us longer to get over there. But you know what that also means? It gives us more time to prepare. It means that if we need to, we can get more altitude. It means that we can get into a better position to attack them. But it also gives them more time to get away or for them to run, depending on what they want to do. But the thing is, at this point, we also have to... There's a lot to this. There's a lot to thinking when we talk about AI. And we've got to think, when we're dealing with stuff like these JU-87s, they are D-variants, so therefore we can work out what guns they have. D-variants, I believe, are the ones with the 220s, or maybe 7.7s, but at least I believe the D-5 has 220s. We also know... What, ammun what amount of ammunition they have, and the D5 has a hell of a lot of ammunition. So, <laughs> we know that even though they've taken out a lot of ground targets, they still could be in the air combat effective, because they, have only t they haven't taken out more than 10, basically, or more than 15 or 20, so they probably still have some ammo. They are out of bombs, because they have taken out medium tanks, so therefore they've had to drop their bombs to take them out, so, we basically know how much ammo they've expended and if they are going to have to go back to base or not, depending on what AI they've taken out. So, because they have assists and because they have ground targets, it is safe to say that they probably have 
had to go back to the airfield. They probably have sustained some damage from those assists. They also have taken out a lot of ground targets, so therefore they're probably low on ammo. Yes, they have a rear gunner that they can take stuff out on, but to be honest, a lot of people do not utilize this. They do not think to use the back gunner to take out ground targets. And also on the JU-87, it's very hard to do, especially because it's only a 7.7, .7, I believe, um, on the back of that D variant. So, first of all, we have to work out, do we go to the place where we know they definitely were, but were about 5 or 10 minutes ago, because we know where the AI has been killed, or do we go to their airfield and risk getting taken out by AA? Now, for me personally, it is an obvious choice on this map, because it is littered so much with anti-aircraft guns all over the place, you might as well go to the airfield, because there's going to be the same amount of fire going after you than uh, than if you were at the airfield. Also, I have teammates with me, they're still alive, they have survived the initial engagement, so we can use them. They can maybe take some flak for us, they can spot enemies, all of this stuff. At the end of the day, humans are going to win out against AI, but you still have to be scared of them, especially when they're in the form of AA guns, or planes which may track you. But when you're assaulting an airfield, it is very much messy. It's very much RNG based. Sometimes you can uh, go past at 200 kilometers an hour and nothing will hit you. The guns will just completely miss. Other times you'll be in a jet going 900 kilometers an hour over the airfield and somehow you'll get sniped and your wing will fall off or you'll get set on fire and die or your pilot will get knocked out. It's very, very odd when it comes to stuff like that. So a lot of the time you've just got to take the chance. And we found ourselves a juicy Heinkel, which was probably going after our troops. And because they were attacking uh, basically the right side of the map from our perspective, we know that they are going to go to this base as well, because it's the closest one. You're a bomber. You want to get down. You want to get back up in the air. That is something we have to take into account as well. Some people go for the safer option, go back to the airfield, uh, which is the main airfield. So therefore, more AA cover, more this, more that. But this guy has decided that he's going to go to this one because well basically he um, he wants to get back into the air he wants to get um, combat effective faster so we can basically just put tons of shots into him as simple as that and because we know this airfield does not have as much AA as the first airfield we can be more aggressive we can be more um, attacking I suppose now a thing to uh, take into account is if there are more than one airfield uh, on a map which is most of them now it's probably good to find a path which goes over both of them because basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that you can attack them from both uh, both angles if they are at one airfield you want to be able to get over to them if they are at another you want to be able to get over to the next. Now I just chopped that guy's tail off and he's going down and because the JU-87's crashed or were taken out that means that they're out as well. Leaving that guy as the last guy, a poor sod, um, when trying to survive. But the thing is you have to you have to use your AI to your advantage. You have to either use them for cover or to be aggressive. In my case I use them a lot to be aggressive and not as defensive but I understand you can use them in defensive ways. A lot of people, if they're the last person on their team, will go back to the airfield. They will go back and use it, its gunners as defense, which is a legitimate tactic in my opinion. It is kind of annoying when it happens, but there's not too much you can do. So you have to understand that it can be used in an offensive and a defensive way. But when attacking airfields, it is very much RNG based. And in realistic, because you basically take more damage than arcade it is a lot more difficult and dangerous to do but it's definitely something you have to do sometimes as shown uh, right here so overall ai there is a lot down to rng when it comes up to it but you still can use it to gain an advantage over your opponents which is exactly what you're looking for so cheers and i'll catch you next time